I'm back. So those of you that subscribe to my YouTube channel will know that I haven't uploaded a video in some time. My apologies for that, but I've had a huge amount of stuff going on in the background where I just haven't been able to focus on doing video work and editing and uploading. You'll see from my social media streams, such as Facebook and Instagram, I've still been getting out with the camera, I just haven't been videoing those experiences. So I took some time out. I'm actually at a bed and breakfast in the south of Belgium right now. Um, in the countryside. It's been a really great experience. I've been doing some scouting for local wildlife. But um, I actually brought with me before I left home my copy of Outdoor Photographer. Um, I don't have a relationship with the magazine, so disclaimer. But in my opinion, this is by far, in a way, the best photographic magazine out there. I absolutely love it. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting the editor Steve Watkins last year at the photography show in Birmingham. We had a great chat about the magazine. And what I think Steve has done, which is really good, is he's made this magazine more interactive in the last 12 months or so. Each month there's a section which is written about a specific genre or specific area of outdoor photography to try and inspire you to get out there and take some images. Um, and then if you take those images, you can actually submit them to the magazine and they potentially will get published depending on the editor's pick and so on. So this month, you can see from the cover, the theme is actually around flowers and plants. Now, I'm not a nature photographer. I typically do 60 to 70% wildlife photography. I typically do 30 to 40% landscape photography. However, I live in Belgium. We don't have huge dramatic landscapes here. And so this theme actually fits a lot to my philosophy around photography, which is to try to stay current, try to stay local, and look at what you've got on your doorstep, and use your photographic skills to create photography. Um, that's really what my channel is about. It's not about the end product. It's not about the end photograph. For me, I want to share the process. I want to share the experience of how I actually get those images. So I thought this would be a great video to bring you guys along with me, um, actually get you out there in the field, show you what I do, what I'm using in terms of the kit, um, what my thought process behind the images are, and I'm hopefully going to try to get five images that I'll then get through to um, the submission process. Um, so yeah, hopefully the wind will hold off because it's been quite windy, and for wildflowers, I really don't need wind. I need stillness and calm but we can actually get out there and I'll take you along with me and hopefully you'll enjoy the video. So I've left the b and I'm walking up the road. You see this farmer's fields to my right here. You can also see those beautiful clouds really picturesque and uh, you'll see the lights really really good but there's still quite a lot of wind so we have to be patient because those flowers are going to be moving and uh, what I'm going to have to do is use fast shutter speed really to freeze that action and that'll be combined with a shallow depth of field it's going to be very challenging and a lot of fun so I'm actually set up here I've got my foundation kit on my camera for those of you interested in what I'm using, I actually got a Panasonic GH5, a Metabone Speed Booster. I'll explain why I've got that on. And I've got the 24 to 70 Canon EF mount lens, that's f2.8. So why am I using a Speed Booster? Well, it's a micro four thirds camera, and the Speed Booster will allow me to gain one extra stop of additional light, but it will also allow me to get a much shallower depth of field. And for my first image, what I want to do is really focus in the foreground on some of these flowers some of the poppies that are here and then use a circular polarizer to bring the color out in the sky and also uh, put a soft ND grad in there just to hold the highlights back and that will be my first image so I'll get set up and hopefully get that done so yeah I'm set up uh, gonna get my first composition here and it is going to be a landscape orientation composition and I've got some poppies in the foreground Got the nice sky in the background. I'm actually at about f4. Uh, my shutter speed's relatively high, around 320. ISO's at 100. So the sky's quite bright. There's a lot of lights. That's why I've got quite a high shutter speed. 
but given the wind that should work really well and uh, yeah it's going to be a nice first composition using the principles of landscape photography um, foreground and background trying to draw the eye into the detail of the flower So for this shot where I'm in vertical mode, I'm actually going to make sure that I actually have a, a larger f-stop. So I'm going to go down to, well, go up to, I should say, around 10. And that'll bring my shutter speed down as well. So it's still at a relatively fast shutter speed, at about 80 of a second. So hopefully that will freeze any motion that I get from the wind, which again is really quite an important one. I'm not so concerned about the wind in these wider uh, landscapes. Um, I'm going to be more concerned about the wind when I actually get to do handheld work. What I'm trying to actually get as well is also make sure that I'm contrasting some of those reds with the other colours of the daisies which are actually white and yellow and there are some blue flowers as well. I, I don't actually know what those blue flowers are but the mixture of colours especially down this fence line is absolutely stunning but it's really really difficult to compose because obviously there's a lot of chaos, there's a really a lot of things going on so I think I'm actually going to ditch the tripod now and I'm going to work a little bit more handheld because I think handheld it will give me a little bit more flexibility but that's going to be a challenge in itself because I'm actually going to do a lot of manual focus work so let's see what I can get there. So I've taken my camera off the tripod, um, going to put it into manual focus which is really important because again these flowers are moving and I'm going to work in aperture priority mode and I'm going to use the ISO to allow my shutter speeds up and then I can control my depth of field to have a really shallow depth of field and now I'm going to go exploring there's a, a natural line of grasses here which I'm going to follow and like that I'm not going to disturb any flowers I've actually found a poppy in and amongst some, some daisies here. I can't actually come around this side because my shadow will cast on and I won't have the natural light here. I'm going to take the image now. In fact, the wind's just picking up. Hopefully the wind will subside and I'll take the shot because I'm in manual focus mode. And the wind is coming this direction, so it's push it, pushing the petal actually onto the center of the flower, which is not what I want. I actually want to be able to see inside the flower. Okay, so I got a quite a nice shot there. I was quite happy with that. I actually had to work around a little bit because the wind was creating havoc with the poppy. But yeah, it's a, a nice shot. I'm happy with that. Um, that's what I said in my intro. It's always good to push your skills, and I really feel like my skills are being pushed trying to work handheld and, and focus manually. Right, on to the next challenge. I think I've got quite a lot of shots there of poppies. I'm now going to try and do some thistles. Uh, even though I'm wearing jeans, actually, um, I've already had a few thistles jump up and bite me through my jeans. So that's something to take care of if you're ever going to do this. But yeah, the blues look really, really nice. It's not really a blue, it's actually a violet. So beautiful colours. Now I've got to actually find one that, um, that's going to do it justice. So I need to try and find a really good isolated thistle or a blue fat blue violet flower and uh, yeah see if I can compose for that. Just trying to get the focus there. 
got the focus. Now wait for the wind to drop. Very strong wind today. There we go. And I got my shot. So it really is amazing what you can find. I mean, just here, well there's lots and lots of butterflies here, but just here, there's a really small, beautiful yellow flower. I have no idea what it is, but I think it's gonna make a really interesting photo. And it's at this point, I wish I had a macro lens. I don't have a macro because it is so, so small. But I'll see if I can actually throw this GH5 into video mode uh, and show it to you for the video because it is a stunning, stunning flower. so I'm going to end the video there today I hope you've enjoyed it it's actually been really difficult conditions with the wind and uh, yeah manual focus high shutter speeds uh, fast moving subjects when I've tried to get the shots of the insects but uh, I've been lucky in a couple of areas and uh, yeah I hope you've at least seen a little bit how I work um, and the experience that uh, that this photography brings it's literally just been one hour out in the field and I've got probably about six to ten images and uh, yeah I'm really really pleased with what I've got uh, the lights been fantastic and um, yeah see you at the next video hope you enjoyed it mm -hmm.